and we're doing section 7.4 right now, solving equations with rational expressions. And we haven't dealt with equations in the past. We've been only dealing with expressions. Uh, things like x over 2 plus 4 thirds. And then we've thought of ways to, you know, combine them with the addition, find the common denominator, that sort of thing. But these are going to be equations. So this is actually going to be equal to a value now. So this is negative 2 thirds. So there's a real distinct um, strategy I'm going to use with this, and uh, I'm just cleaning those up. It goes well, something like this. I'm going to um, think of what the common denominator would be, and it would be 6. I look at all of those uh, denominators, and I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use it in such a way that I don't have to deal with fractions anymore. I want to have those uh, denominators completely eliminated. So I'm going to take that common denominator, that 6, and I'm going to multiply both sides by it. And notice if I do that, here I'd have 6 times x over 2 plus, that gets distributed into there, 6 times 4 thirds equals, and notice this is a negative 2 thirds, and that's getting multiplied by 6 as well. Um, and I can think of these 6 as just a 6 over 1. They're the same thing. That might help you if you want to think about it that way. I'll rewrite this one. So now, uh, what what is great is I can do some reducing. Like 2 goes into 6 three times. And 3 goes into 6 two times. Notice what's happening is my, my denominator just ends up being 1s. So my denominators, are, I don't, they're not going to need to write them. They, they are, they're not going to be in the way. 3 goes into 6 two times. So after I've done that, notice what I have here is ones in the denominator, so I don't need to write them. They're just implied down there. 3 times x is 3x, plus 2 times 4 is 8, equals negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So this is equivalent to that, but this is much easier to solve. We know how to solve these. Um, a mathematician would say we reduce this to a simpler case. This is more difficult to solve, so we simplified it. And reduced it to something that's easier to solve. We've been solving things like this forever. Subtract 8 from both sides. Uh, 3x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 3. And it looks like x equals negative 4. So on these types of problems, I should check my answer. I'm going to plug it back in. So my original equation was x over 2 plus 4 thirds. And it said that was equal to negative 2. And I'm going to put a question mark here because I'm going to check if it actually does work when I plug in negative 4. So I'm going to plug the negative 4 in for the x. Negative 4 over 2 plus 4 thirds. Does that, in fact, equal negative 2 thirds? Well, let's see. Negative 4 over 2, that's negative 2. Uh, negative 2, uh, if I think about that in thirds, that's the same as negative 6 thirds. 4 thirds, and if I add those together, that does in fact equal 2 thirds. It checks out. So yeah, there's my answer right there. X equals negative 4. So again, notice the strategy. Uh, multiply by a common denominator, and that wipes out all of the denominators altogether, and they can go on to solve it. Great. Let's do, let's do another example. So how about, how about this one? X plus 1 over 3, and that's going to get added to x minus 3 over 4. And I want to know when that is equal to 1 6. All right, so same idea. And that idea is uh, I want to get rid of those denominators. I want to eliminate those denominators. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to find the lowest common denominator. It looks like 12. These all go into 12. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. Multiply this side by 12, multiply this side by 12. And if I do that, notice I get uh, 12 times x plus 1 over 3 plus 12 times x minus 3 over 4 equals 1 sixth times 12. 
So 3 goes into 12 four times, that denominator is knocked out. 4 goes into 12 three times, that's eliminated. 6 goes into 12 twice. And what's great now is that denominator is completely gone. And what I'm left with is 4 times this x plus 1 plus 3 times this um, x minus 3. And then 1 times 2. And I know how to solve that. I've been solving those forever, too. We all have distribute that 4 into there. 4x plus 4. Distribute that 3 into there. 3x minus 9. And that's equal to 2. And then we can combine up some like terms. 4x plus 3x is uh, 7x. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Fix that 5, kind of. Uh, keep going to solve this. Add 5 to both sides. Looks like 7x equals 7. So, x equals 1. I should plug it back in and check it. So let me plug it back in. So uh, I'm going to plug it back in for x. 1 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 minus 3 over 4, does that, in fact, equal 1 sixth? Let's see, 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, 2 thirds plus 1 minus 3 is, is negative. So uh, negative 2 fourths. Still want to know if that equals 1 sixth. Um, thirds and fourths, let me turn these both into twelfths. So uh, times 4 over 4 times 3 over 3 times those versions of 1. That makes this 8 twelfths plus negative 6 twelfths. 8 plus negative 6 is 2. 2 twelfths is 1 sixth. It checks out. So yeah, my answer is x equals 1. If it didn't check out, I'd have to throw out my answer. It means that it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and do another example. Um, I'm going to have 3 over y minus 2. And that's going to be equal to uh, 2 over y minus 3. And now there's lots of ways that we could um, do this equation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick with my method, which has been find the lowest common denominator, multiply both sides by it, and then we'll cancel out both those uh, both those denominators. So I notice I have a y minus 2 times and a y minus 3. So that's, that's my lowest common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by y minus 2 times y minus 3, and multiply this side by the same thing. Look at that 3. Wow, that is handsome. And what's great is I notice that my y uh, plus y minus 2 divides out. Notice like this is over 1, right? I'm multiplying both sides by it. So that divides out to a 1. Uh, my y minus 3 divides out over here. So what I'm left with is on the left-hand side, 3 times y minus 3. And on the right-hand side, 2 times y minus 2. So I'm going to solve that. Distribute that 3 into there. 3y... Uh, minus 9, and then I'm going to distribute this 2 into here, and that will give me 2y minus 4. And that, that's easy to solve. I, I took this, eliminated those denominators, now I can solve that. So I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides, which gives me a y over here on the left-hand side, and add 9 to both sides. And that gives me a 5 over here. So it looks like, so as y equals 5, um, I should plug it back in and check it, make sure that it works. So I have 3 over uh, 5 minus 2. And I want to know, does that actually equal 2 over 
5 minus 3. So let's see, uh, 5 minus 2 is 3, so this left-hand side is 3 over 3. And the right-hand side is uh, 2 over 2. 1 equals 1. Yeah, that works. So y is equal to 5 in that problem. All right. All right, let's do another example. And I'm going to have x over x minus 5 uh, plus 1 fifth is equal to 5 over x minus 5. And so as I take a look at this, I notice that my denominators are 5 and x minus 5. So that tells me my common denominator is 5 times x minus 5. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that 5 times x minus 5. And this whole thing is going to get multiplied by that. So now um, I distribute this into here. So I have 5 times x minus 5, and that's essentially over 1 times x over x minus 5, plus, distributed into here, 5 times x minus 5 uh, over 1, and that's getting multiplied by 1 fifth. And over on the right, uh, 5 over x minus 5, times 5 times x minus 5. Again, that's over 1. So let me see what cancels. Uh, over here, the x minus 5 divides out to give me a 1. Here, the 5s divide out. And here, the x minus 5s divide out. So cool, what's left? Uh, what I have here is 5 times x. What I have here is x minus 5 times 1. And what I have over here is 5 times 5, so 25. So let me combine up some like terms. 5x plus x is 6x. Uh, and then I have that minus 5 equals 25. Add 5 to both sides. And I get 6x equals 30. So divide by x, uh, sorry, divide by 6, and x is 5. All right, so that feels that feels pretty good. Uh, let me plug it back in and see if it works. I'm going to check it. So I'm going to plug it back into my original equation, which was um, x over x minus 5. So 5 over 5 minus 5 plus 1 fifth equals 5 over 5 minus 5. And so take a look what happens. 5 divided by 5 minus 5 is 0. I have trouble. Uh, I got a problem right here. I have it here, too, 5 over 0. And I don't really need to write the rest of it, but I will just so. If I try to plug 5 back into this, I'm dividing by 0. Um, notice right here, x cannot be 5. When I multiplied both sides by that denominator, I lost that information that I was that I was dividing by x minus 5. So I could solve this and get an answer. But this is only equivalent to that. Well, this is equivalent to that except when x is 5. x can be 5 here, but it can't be here. So if I plug it in and plug it back in when I'm dividing by 0, that means it doesn't work. So I have to throw it out. So that means there's no solution to this. You can write no solution, you can write the empty set, but it means there's no x value that if I plug it in over here, it will make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. All right, let's do one last example. I like that color. So I'm going to have uh, 3x over x minus 4 equals 2x over uh, x minus 3 plus 6 over x squared minus 7x plus 12. So remember my strategy, find a common denominator, 
multiply both sides by it to make all the denominators come out. Um, here's an x minus 4, and here's an x minus 3. But this one, um, this looks like a composite. This looks like some things multiplied together. So let me factor that. Things that multiply to 12 add to negative 7 uh, is x minus 4 times x minus 3. So this that I had here is equivalent to that, which is great because there's an x minus 4 x minus 4. Uh, there's an x minus 3. So that must be my, my common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by it. Multiply this side by that x minus 4 times x minus 3. And I'm going to multiply this side by it as well. So over here on the left-hand side, the x minus 4s are going to cancel out. Um, the divide out to give me a 1. And then over here, um, you know, I'm, I'm distributing the whole thing. So this is going to go here, and it's also going to go here. And I could write it out, but I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to notice that here, this x minus 3 would cancel out that x minus 3. So that would leave me a 2x times x minus 4. If I distribute it here, they both cancel out. So that just leaves me a 6. And over on the left, the x minus 4s cancel out. So that leaves me a 3x multiplied by x minus 3. I now have to solve that. Oh, it's better than this. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. I'm going to distribute that 3x into there. That gives me a 3x squared minus 9. I'm distribute that 2x into there. That gives me a uh, oh, 9 x. Look, I forgot to take the x. Uh, 2x, 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. I have a quadratic now. I have something that has an x squared in it. So I'm going to try and factor it eventually. We use quadratic formula, but first I have to get it equal to 0. So let me subtract this from both sides. That gives me an x squared. Let me add this to both sides. That gives me a negative x. And let me subtract this 6 from both sides. This gives me negative 6 here, equal to 0. Great, so now I'm going to solve that. Um, I could run it through quadratic formula. I'm going to factor it. Things that multiply to negative 6, that to negative 1 would be negative 3 and 2. So if these two things equal 0, yeah, sorry about that. So if these two things equal 0, that means that x has to equal either positive 3 or negative 2. So now what I need to do is, is check these and see if they work. And I could plug them both back in, but really the only thing I need to make sure is that neither one of these force me to divide by 0. So if I look at the 3, if I were to plug the 3 back in, notice how I'd be dividing by a 0 here or here. So I can throw that out. Negative 2 is fine. It doesn't make me divide by 0. It will work. So my answer is x equals negative 2. All right, so give these problems a try. Let me know if you have any questions. Email me, and uh, good luck.